I'm gonna do a little series here on some of the implements that I have for my Ventrac 4500Z. I'm gonna show you how I use them, how they work, how you hook them up, and show you all the details that I know about them. We're about to finish up a landscape bed at the house and I've got the power bucket hooked up. So that's what we're gonna start with in this little series. There's your model number, HE482. For the standard power bucket, you do not need the four valve kit. Unless you have the grapple on the top with the third function, that's the only time you'd need the four valves. And that's actually why I added my four valve kit is because when I bought this bucket, uh, the guy that was selling it had a grapple on top of it. And that's where it's been um, since a couple weeks after I purchased the unit. So I had it on my bucket. I used it a little bit around a grading job that I was doing. And I found out that it was really hard to get next to structures. Like if you were spreading mulch or dirt up next to a sidewalk or a house, uh, you could easily uh, damage the top of the concrete when you're dumping the dirt out or you couldn't necessarily get close to a house because the grapple is in the way. So for me, I found it kind of aggravating. I uh, used it a few times in the woods, uh, moving limbs around. But for me and what I do in my business and around my yard, I just never had much of a use for it. And it was more of a aggravation and a hindrance than it was helpful to me. So I went ahead and took it off. So the only add-on that I have on this power bucket are the teeth. I do highly recommend these teeth if you're gonna be scooping dirt or if you're gonna be digging down in the ground so you're cutting off high spots, sort of like you would with the front of a skid steer. I uh, highly recommend the teeth on there. I think it might've been like an $80 add-on. The other option that I would like to have that I don't have, and I'm not really sure if I would uh, justify using it, are the extensions for the side. So the extensions come up you know, maybe uh, 12 inches or so all the way around. It allows you to haul more mulch. Uh, really, you wouldn't be able to haul more dirt or more rocks uh, because the bucket just can't support that much weight. This, this bucket pretty much max out the lift capacity uh, if you're hauling gravel. Another thing is you can see a little bit where my fairing is dented in. That's from hauling a lot of mulch and dirt on bigger jobs. So it would protect the tractor a little bit as well. There's not much to say on the maintenance side of the power bucket. You've got a Zerk fitting here on the lift cylinder and then also on the front side of it. And then as well, right there and right here. Let's talk about the operation of the power bucket. To the right, that lowers it, click it all the way over, puts it in float, pull it to the left, it raises it. If you push it to the right, it's gonna tip it forward and dump it. Push it to the left, it's gonna tip it backwards. So my favorite setup to run if I was doing a grade job on a yard with the power rake is to put the bucket on the back of the machine. One thing I do love about running it on the back of the tractor is you can get it perfectly flat on the ground on the back of the tractor. Whereas sometimes on the front of the tractor, the hood will obstruct your sight. So I plan on doing a totally separate video on this three point hitch with the three in one adapter. But hands down, this is the best thing that I ever installed on my tractor. I believe every tractor should come with one of these unless you're using it strictly for mowing. In a grading scenario where you have the power rake on the front and you have the power bucket on the back, you can uh, easily power rake rocks into a wind row on the front. And then without even getting off the tractor and unhooking the power rake, hooking the bucket up to the front and scooping the rocks, you can literally just back up to it, scoop it up on the back, go dump them and then keep on going with your power rake. And this right here makes the job so much better and so much more efficient, it's hard to even explain. But we're going to talk all about three-point hitch at some other point. But just so you know, you can run the power bucket on the back of the three-point hitch. And 99% of the time, that's what I'm doing. Unless I'm moving strictly dirt like we're going to be doing today. All right, so let's get a few shots of moving dirt around. I've got a new landscape bed that I'm installing back here across the yard. Um, one huge benefit to this Ventrac over a traditional tractor, which I have a traditional tractor. I use it all the time, but I would never drive it in the yard right there. That's just my personal preference, but I've seen what it does to a yard that's fully irrigated that uh, doesn't have a lot of compaction issue already. You'll leave tire tracks in it in a heartbeat. This machine right here will not do that. So I absolutely love the Ventrac and uh, I'll show you what this power bucket can do. So anytime I'm scooping into a pile of dirt, I try to run the bucket right against the bottom of the ground and I simply put it flat on the ground, put it in the float position, and sometimes I'll leave it in float, sometimes I'll bump it off the float position, but the float position helps you get it right down firmly against the ground. One thing I've learned over the years from experience is the tractor does need to be at full RPMs and you need to be in low gear when you're trying to scoop into a large pile of dirt. Then if you're traveling long distances, you can simply put it in high gear and go across the yard. But since we're not going that far, we'll just leave it in low gear. 
lot of times you'll see me back the tractor up and then jolt it forward real quickly. This helps just shake some of the material off the top of the bucket and keeps it from falling off in your transit. Once you get the dirt to where you're going, you can simply dump the bucket gradually as you back up or pull forward to try to help spread it out some. And then you can fine tune it by dropping the bucket down to the ground, uh, maybe in the float position, maybe not, depending on how loose the dirt is, and then back dragging it to flatten it out. There's nothing else out there that has the precision of a bench rack. This bed's probably six feet wide, a four foot power rake. Doesn't get much better than that.